In this Guided Talks, Robert talks to Luke Quilter of Sleeping Giant Media. Luke is co-founder and CEO of Sleeping Giant Media and Giant Campus. With an excess of 15 years worth of experience in digital marketing, Luke currently runs three businesses based in Kent and regularly lectures, coaches and teaches his expertise, specialising in SEO, pay-per-click, social media and business startups. Robert and Luke discuss training as part of the offer, the transformation curve, the response to COVID-19, and the restartup mentality, plus much more. Hello, and welcome to the Guided Talks. And today I'm absolutely delighted, absolutely delighted to have the legend, I say that, say that sensibly because he's a legend to me, Luke Quilter. And Luke uh, is a legend to me because He's been uh, on the speaking circuit, developing a, a really great reputation for some, as someone who goes in and helps businesses understand uh, digital and social media, but he has an agency behind that. So we're going to find out loads more about that. Hello, Luke. Hi there. Thank you for having me. Uh, absolute pleasure. So uh, without further ado, just, just explain, because I know there's three businesses and there's a speaking uh, sleeping giant. So just explain to us what, what the, the Luke Quilter empire is. It's, um, it's a small empire, if we, if we can call it that. But um, so, yes, we started 12 years ago, Sleeping Giant Media, uh, just a digital marketing agency. So we do paid search, SEO and social, all about getting relevant traffic to our clients' websites. And that was our first business that we kind of set up, myself and business partner, Anthony Kloku. We were previously at Holiday Extras and kind of leapt out of that into uh, business and into the digital world. Um, and we've grown that business from the dining we've gone full circle now because i'm back in the dining room but we've, we've grown that business now to uh, 55 people uh, based predominantly in kent um and and that was really just the start of it and then since then we've added some additional businesses so uh, giant campus which is our training organization we've added i think it's now four years ago and again i'm not sure because time just seems to kind of blur these days but um that's that was essentially taking our training content and then offering that out externally so that we can then train our clients and train people to develop digital skills um, and we also have um, actually a new a new uh, bit of information a new release that's um is very much hot off the press at the moment which is a business that we are launch- launching called spark the spark agency um, and that is focused around um, paid search seo and social but on a much smaller scale so businesses with sort of tighter budgets probably more on a local level um and that has literally launched in the last um three weeks as well so we're really really excited about that and the possibilities that um that that will bring so what's the difference between spark and the giant yeah so we've kind of um as a business we've been developing smaller solutions so smaller um offerings to, to businesses that have budgets pretty much between the sort of 500 to 1500 pound budget so that's kind of the smaller smaller end of the the spectrum and um, we've been doing that successfully for a long time but it's always kind of sat in sleeping giant media um and so we've never really kind of pushed it as a as a kind of a, a direct offering whereas spark is now doing that so we've just we're just launching a new website and kind of all the the, the joys that come with with that new business uh, launch so that will be aimed at the um the smaller businesses and again you know particularly at the moment given everything that's going on a lot of businesses are jumping online for the first time and their next question is going to be how do i stand out so that you know the first question over the last couple of months has been how do i get online their next question is going to be how do i stand out and that's where the spark agency comes in so that's made, that's aimed at the kind of uh, generally the smaller side of the market and then sleeping giant media is is generally your sort of mid to large size company that's looking for uh you know great great results great performance uh, within paid search and social uh, and sorry and seo as well so it's kind of it's, it's the same proposition or the same um offerings but just done on a different scale so i i uh, the spark offering is really interesting because the the what would i say the 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 business um sense would be normally get bigger clients who are with you for longer who pay more with bigger margins where you can become more strategic so the 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 normal the normal route would be you know go up the food chain luke absolutely is you know one proposal you know fifty thousand pounds a month versus one proposal 500 pound a month times 10 
a hundred. Absolutely, yeah. No, it's, it's it's a good question. I think I think um, the reason this has kind of come about is that um, as so as we've got bigger as an agency, our efficiencies have increased dramatically. So I think what happens is you you can start if you're a small agency and you're talking, you know, two, three, four people. You know, your cost overheads are are um, are not that normally that significant in the sense that your your office space is small or you're working from home and you don't do all the um, you don't you don't necessarily do all the kind of stuff that um, an agency of sort of 40 50 people does in terms of um, the cost that goes into the, the employees so I think you what you find is that the smaller agency you can turn service the smaller businesses but they then lack in potentially the ability to kind of um, constantly stay on the cutting edge because you're constantly delivering so it becomes difficult to stay cutting edge whilst also delivering and that's always been a, a balancing act for a lot of agencies trying to ma- to manage the demands of new business generation delivering um, for clients and also staying kind of really really current with everything that's going on i think as we got bigger um you know our internal knowledge sharing is, is really good so we we're actually able to share insights very quickly across the, the team and that then allows us to then become really really efficient in the service delivery so that we've then actually been able to be more cost effective in del- delivering that smaller end um, offering whereas i think when we were sort of 20 people we just didn't, we, we couldn't do it. Um, and as I said, we, we've been delivering, we have been delivering this service in, in the background for quite some time, but we've just not really broken it out to do its own thing. It just feels like the right time to be, to be talking about launching it and, you know, some exciting opportunities with lots of businesses recently innovating, pivoting, moving online and, and actually, you know, then, you know, they're going to be asking what do they do next and, and, and the, the, you know, ultimately digital marketing is likely to be a larger part of their, of their sort of plans in the, in the coming 12 months. So it, it felt like the timing was right. Um, you know, with that, with that said, in terms of your, your question is, you know, sleep and giant media is moving up that food chain as well. So actually we feel that we're moving up that food chain through sleeping giant media. Um, but we already have a dedicated team that, that can deliver the, the spark proposition as well. So the spark proposition, just to be clear, the spark proposition is, isn't just the same people, different website. It's actually different people in the organization but taking it taking advantage of the the economies of scale taking advantage of the systems and scripts and exactly that AI. yeah 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 it's interesting because i've uh, got an american friend alex who mm. has been on the acquisition trail and he his agents is about 190 200 people mm. and he reckons that they can go into almost any agency and because of their uh, the process that they have for acquiring business because of the process they have for proposal writing, process they have timekeeping, process they have for monitoring and, and, and so on and so forth. They can go into virtually any business and take a business that's just doing, you know, five, six percent EBITDA mm. and in three months turn it to 15, 20 percent EBITDA quite easily mm. just by putting in good solid processes that they wouldn't have known about on the way up. Absolutely. But they only understand now they're of a certain scale and they've got the big, the big systems and so on. And Cool. That's Makes great. Sense, well, yeah. I wish you all the luck with that. Mm, thank the, you. The, yeah. Small agencies in Kent are throwing their eyes at the ceiling going, <laughs> bloody Luke. Well, honestly, we were just getting on. Okay. And now he's there's plenty of room for everyone. There's loads of, <laughs> there's loads of business out there. But, um... I think there is. See, I think it's like, it's like a great big um, barn with the lights turned off and everyone's wandering around <laughs> and, and occasionally you bump into other agencies, but not all the time, you know? Mm. And, and in any case, if someone's, if someone leans in towards you, Luke, rather than leaning towards Jay, the reason they do that is because they like the cut of your jib or because they don't like the way he talks or because he specializes in professional service firms or because mm. you have experience of large businesses or because you want, you know, so we're, in my, my thing is that agencies are all running a different race to be the best, to be the first, to be the most profitable, to sell, to not sell, to keep, to grow, to not grow, under 30, under 50. Yeah. And, I, and I think that can, although from the outside world, the agency world is bland and undifferentiated. My God, it's bland. Everyone's <laughs> pulling ropes, climbing trees, customer service, customer service, what makes us, you know, delivering a, 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 a service you know, which is bespoke and yet reasonably priced. I mean, everyone bloody does award-winning, number one in, you know, delete your county name. Um, and so from the punter's point of view, it's really frustrating, you know, yeah, because you're yeah. like, everyone's, everyone's selling the same stuff. Uh, but actually, 
we're not at the heart of it. We're all very, very anyhow. I'll I'll stop. No, I agree. No, I agree. We'll, we'll come back. We'll, well, maybe let's just uh, let's talk about that for a minute. So, how do you how do you differentiate either of those businesses? You made you made. Well, we're uh, multi award winning Kent's first. Uh, no, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so sleeping giant media. Yeah, I and, and it you know it's one of those things, isn't it? I mean, it's, you know. We're very proud to have won a lot, a lot of awards. Yeah. So it is a, it is a factor of obviously of our proposition, and and um, you know we we've won some pretty pretty awesome ones over the years, which is which is great, which helps I think businesses. Um, it helps it helps clients understand if they don't understand digital, and I think that's a kind of a, a sort of the external validation required sometimes when you you know when you are talking to potential clients that don't really get digital and, and actually almost how do they how do they differentiate? So you know we've won clients who who search for um, award-winning digital agencies in Kent and actually you know we've, we've won clients because of that so you know it is a factor but yeah what, what we've tried to do with Sleeping Giant Media is we um, we've di- di- sort of di- diversified in terms of the, uh, the training aspect so what we do and we think we do better than anyone is actually to um, awaken potential so we empower everybody not just our team but we empower the people that we work with because for us the, the digital space is not about you know black boxes it's not about pulling the wool over anyone's eyes and i think unfortunately there's there's still agencies out there that do that and there has been a lot historically that have done this where it's a case of you know that you get them on board and they can't they don't show you what they're doing they don't show you their ip they they're kind of locked in and then you want to leave and it's very difficult to to leave and we have this you know all the time when we take over new clients and they they have their the agency wants to own their analytics account i mean you know that makes no sense to me at all and or they own the paid search account and it's like it's it's kind of frustrating so for, for us our you know the way we try to differ, differentiate is focus on training so we um develop what we call the true partnership where we actually um will work alongside organizations with their digital skills um and also deliver so we will deliver some of the work but we'll also build in training processes and systems so that they can actually upskill their entire team and then what that means is that they get good at something that we were doing and we pass it to them we do the next thing they get good at the next bit we move we do the next thing and i think that as a as a proposition for agencies is is how do you add value you know that's what the question should be for all agencies how do you add value not how do you stop them from leaving is how do you do the next best thing and that's what we we focus on and that's how we achieve it through training and upskilling their internal teams and, and developing um you know a true partnership not just in words a partnership which is often banded about left right and center which means nothing it's, it's really focusing on uh, developing their skill sets as well. 